Hey y'all, we're back down here in the Chiefs pit with Timmy Petty, Mark Petty, Richie Petty. And growing up, some legendary races with the titles was always cool to us. You had the World 600, the Southern 500, Rebel 400. But the one that really stood out with us, other than Daytona 500, that brings back really good memories for us as kids is the Firecracker 400. Always running July 4th down in Daytona Beach. You got any good memories to get started on that, Tim? Gosh, we got a bunch. So <laughs> we probably about to do more than one episode on this one. But I guess, uh, you know, one of the things I remember is like when you'd leave work, working at the garage area back then, that race started at 11 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock. Okay, well, yeah. what, whatever. Yeah. But you, you basically, when you got done, whatever, if it was Saturday or Sunday, whenever they run the race, but you'd leave and you come back. I'll never forget. I mean, the, under the hood was just as hot as you left it because it never had a chance to cool down. No, nothing normalized, you know, back then. And what I remember is, like you said, the race started at 10, so we got to track at what time? Four, Pretty daggum early. It, it, it was but, still, and, and they would run that Paul Revere 250, is that and, right? And they would still be running. Uh, whatever it was, it was a midnight ride of Paul Revere, right? And, right. And yes. They called it. Yeah. But it, it was the sporty cars or Camel GTs or whatever. They'd run the infield. But it, it, and they would still be running that race when we would be there, yep. and you'd be getting your stuff ready to go. Oh, so they are. Right. I didn't know when they'd be running, but I, I just I don't know exactly when yeah. it ended. But yeah, I remember it was a big deal. They started when you left, and it'd still be going but on. The, but the push that they would advertise for the Daytona Speedway be at the track at ten on the beach by two. That's what they're over. And was. and 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 lots of people on other teams use that time to take their families and spend at least a day or two on the beach after the race because of the way it failed. Right. Yes. And, well, and it wasn't just the other teams. What I mean, like say what I, I I remember a lot about like the people that worked here, everybody that worked at Petty's, their family was there. Oh, it, it was a big deal. And, and, the, and lots of pool goes back parties. To the, the Petty's being a big family, you had you had Dale's family, you had Wade Thornburg's family. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. That, Steve Baruch and all them, and we were all the same age, and we all hung out at the well, swimming we would, pools. And we would always... Quite a crowd. They would they would get two rooms and have what they called an efficiency, because it would have a kitchen. And Mama would cook during them times, supper at different times. We'd because everything things, was so crowded. But yeah, but we would we would stay right there, we'd have an efficiency. But you're talking about the growing up with Jeff Remen and uh, Stephen Thornburg, yep. and all these kids and stuff, it was... It was a great time growing up to be back in the 70s yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, back in all oh, yeah, of I mean, yeah. Lisa, Sharon, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. I guess you and Kyle was at the racetrack, but, yeah, but Kyle, even early on, y'all were right around there. But still, it, 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 even the, the re regular race activities got done quick enough where you could go and enjoy that mm -hmm. pool. And usually it was after that evening storm anyway, so, you know, the crowd had kind of eased I off learned, the beach. I learned to swim in Daytona because we used to have uh, ski belts, and yep. we'd wear ski belts. And they had these big old... Uh, High dives. I mean, that was before the insurance closed them all down. They yeah. had high dives and low dives. We'd put our ski belts on and run out there and I'd jump in the, the deep end. Well, we had lunch and I took my ski belt off, right? Well, I run over after I got done scarfing down my sandwich or whatever. I run over there and jumped on that high dive and jumped in. I'm swimming away. And somebody says, hey, Richie, where's your ski belt? You didn't wait an hour so you wouldn't cramp. <laughs> That's right. What, you you was going to cramp up. So, <laughs> but anyway, from then on. Is that true? I, I, that was I, five, I, was, I was five or six years old. And from then on, I never needed the ski belt from then on out. So. Oh, man. But, man, I, I'm going to say this about um, Fourth of July Daytona memories. We could do five to ten episodes oh, on this. Yeah. No, no, no. So and many we great all, yes, yes. And I mean, go ahead. It, well, no, it, it's anybody, but the watermelon fights oh, in the pool. Goodness. And it grease that thing with what Vaseline yeah, or something. No, it was, it was uh, native, native tan. Native tan. Oh, the Hawaiian tropic. Hawaiian tropic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you remember they had them uh, by the pools. They had them Hawaiian yeah, tropic yeah. stands and, and the, yeah, and they had them girls that sold it. In the oh, I didn't suit. notice those. Yeah. But we would, they would always have a kids watermelon fight. And then they'd have the adults. The kids was a little bit calmer, calmer. But boy, when them men got there, it was scary. I mean, it was it jumping was. on each other, trying yeah. to drown each other over a freaking watermelon. And the funny thing <laughs> is, is whoever won it when they got done, you know, sure. they split it oh, yeah, and everybody, everybody ate it. the pool ate it. Yeah, and you see this hat here, the the Benny Parsons hat we got going on today. I can remember their crowd being there, the Allison's crowd being yeah, there. Benny, yeah, well, Keith, right, there's Keith and Kevin. Yeah, they was in on the kids. We all we yeah. just hang out, you know. It was. Oh, oh, George, you mean George. Yeah, oh, yeah, but we don't we don't realize, we did not realize then the great memories. I mean, 
who gets to spend the Fourth of July yeah. at Daytona Beach? Now that was that's you know? when we stayed over at the Reef, I believe it was. Before oh, we go the in, reef. The, yeah, what happened? Oh, yeah. And one, what year was it that the King won? And we went back to the motel, and whatever that ice cream pot. I think we've talked about it before, yeah. but they had the petty parfait beside the Reef. They had the, the petty reef. parfait, yeah. and it was red, white, and blue. July the Fourth. I mean, it was Richard won his first one, and he'd run a three or four seconds right in a row, and he could never seem to win. David Pearson was the was the king of the, the firecracker four hundred. He's the silver fox, not and the he king. Was always, oh, yeah. you know, well, I'm just saying he could he could the firecracker. He was the man. Richard Petty was the man for the Daytona. Yeah. Right, coming down out of turn number four, coming down past the start finish line, and Pearson backs off for Petty. Something wrong with Pearson? Petty takes the lead. To have stopped so suddenly, to have suddenly slowed up like that makes me think, though, Jackie, he backed off on purpose because obviously he's still got horsepower and he's now closed it right in behind Richard Petty as they turn and come for home. Ken Pearson slingshot him as he comes down low. Petty may run him into the fence and it's going to be Pearson winning it. An incredible, daring move and it paid off for David Pearson. And he came back and won it in 77. Okay. I think it was '77 when they had the Petty Parfait. Yeah. Because it was that was probably where we were staying as the Reef at the time. I'm, I I don't know. I, that's my thoughts. No. Yeah. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. At the end of this race, and now everybody's standing. A lot of Petty fans here today. Naturally, this will be the 185th victory in Richard Petty's long and illustrious career, more than any other driver. The checkered flag is out for him, and here it is: the winner of the Firecracker 400. You know, one thing about, about the reef, too, I can remember over there because it was just a neat little layout. But Kyle, he had one of them big skateboards at the time. This was before skateboarding was cool. Yeah, or right around when it was becoming cool. Right. Yeah. I guess he'd got it on a California trip. But I can remember him riding that skateboard, and I was probably, you know, six or seven years old. And he would let me ride it around a little bit, and that was the coolest thing because it was a cool bus. Uh, oh, yeah. I, well, well, yeah, um, before we go into the other – episodes or memories I, I just want to reach out and tell everybody since we're mentioning everybody just thank you all for watching our channel it's it's been going pretty good and uh some of the people you wouldn't expect watching watching and it's just it's yes, kind of overwhelming pretty awesome. and it's neat it's neat to hear back from you that you're watching because you know didn't there are the calls and, and texts and bringing back more memories emails. for us to even even remember but one thing i'd like to say is uh you know i was working at stavola's and I think we might have mentioned this before, but Bobby Allison won the 87 uh, Firecracker race and, you know, with the Almond Boys and, and yeah. uh, uh, just several of my good friends. And I, I, that was one of the few times when Bobby won, I went to the victory lane because I think either Keith or Herman or somebody come by and got, mm -hmm. come on, Kimmy. That's pretty awesome. And, and so I got to go to victory lane. with, with 77 them. and 87. Yeah. Ten now, years later, I mean, but, same way with Pop and uh, seventy eight. Who would have? Wait a minute, nineteen seventy seven. We're all hanging around the pool. <laughs> yeah. Who would have ever imagined that Timmy Petty Timmy would Allison. be working for Bobby Allison yeah. and ten just and eighty eight years later? At the, at the, at the, yeah, they but just about. ten years later. Now, eighty four. Sorry, I got away from the firecracker. No, no, but that's one of your great yeah. memories. Now, I mean, that's, Richard that's had one of his doing. biggest. He had one of his biggest races at eighty four. All the two hundred Pepsi. Yeah. Yep. But uh, for the Firecracker 400, and uh, when the president R Ronald yeah. Reagan was there, and he won. I mean, that was probably one of the probably the biggest petty memories going because yep. that and was just the coolest thing. The president of the United States being there, yep. winning the 200. To solidify under the caution at the beginning of the next lap. <laughs> it's an incredible situation now. Are they going to race to the line? This is an interesting rule situation, Jim. You are allowed to race to the line once the yellow has come out. Cale Yarbrough did that. Richard Petty is counterattacking. This may be the race that we're looking at here as they sweep up into traffic. A highly dangerous situation. These Coming down the front straight. Here they are, Sam. They will come across the yellow line just about together, but Petty had the lead. By the We were there with Kyle with the 7-Eleven deal. With, he had to... And then Richard won the race, and all the the good times or whatever went on. Anyway, everybody had to leave the track, remember? Yeah. And then you everybody went back. Then you had to come back in about 
two o'clock for the or picnic. something. For the Kentucky Fried Chicken picnic. Right, yeah. yeah. But, oh, yeah. But at the one. time, I didn't realize what it was, but it was a presidential campaign event for Ronald Reagan for 1984. And I look back on it now and thinking how lucky we was. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you remember, that, like like you are talking about, they'd make, they'd run everybody off. Yeah. And then you had to park on the outside, and they brought you back on them city yeah. buses. Yep. Remember Tim Richmond being on there with us? <laughs> he had his sunglasses on. And, and Daddy got on to him. He says, why you got your sunglasses on in the middle of the bus? And he pulled it down. And he said, Bobby gave me a little well, gift. I thought it was after. David Pearson. Yeah. That might have been one he, of them. He had two black eyes. One of them blacked his eye right after the race. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yep. Yeah, but, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yep. But then, then again, it's, it's memories that uh, we didn't realize. But Tammy went out. She was there singing. Yep. So there's a legend we got to see. We got to see Ronald Reagan when Richard Petty won the the race and then there with all the Kelly Arborough and Bobby Allison and yeah. David Pearson, Richard Petty. Man, we was in heaven. <laughs> we just didn't know all it. All <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, how 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 cool was it? It was Man, big time. Today. Well, definitely, uh, you know, 200 is, is very, very important, but uh, under the circumstances, uh, with all the presidents that's ever been in the United States, this is the first one that's ever showed up at a racetrack. So everybody's got to go from that, from racing standpoint, and I wanted to be the one that was able to, to welcome him to Grand National Races. Richard, congratulations to you on this terrific occasion. Mr. President, thanks for being with us. Well, pleased to be here, and it's been a very exciting day, and uh, I join in the congratulations. Uh, I even have a conflict of interest here because uh, he's um, doing some yeoman service uh, in a political sense. Now, well, when we started running, and I guess we ran 93, 94, the Pepsi 400, which I still call it the Firecracker 400, but I can remember being down there and it being so dang hot. I mean, you yeah. can't believe how hot it was in them cars. Well, that's before all the air conditioning stuff got going. Do, uh, do y'all remember that? Remember back in the 70s when, uh, I guess it would have been, the, I don't know what year it was, but you talk about how hot it was. Mm -hmm. That's what brought that memory back up to me. We, we'd always, Daddy would come back from racetrack. <laughs> yes. And that was when Mama would do a lot of cooking yeah. in the room for them efficiencies. Yep, yep. And he wouldn't want to go nowhere because it's so hot. Yep. Cool but he got there. us up that morning. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Right at right as the sun was rising, and he come and got up, got all us boys up, and we all went out in the ocean swimming, and all them fish coming and was, by. And it was oh, as that calm. was freaky. It, it really. Was, is. It was as calm as a lake out there. Yeah. yeah. It was, and but we we were, we were swimming, and a school of fish come by, and we thought it was great. We was grabbing fish. Well, then you get older. And you watch these TV shows, what was it, Shark Week? <laughs> yes, yes. And they talk about right, like, not many, like two yeah. or three miles that's from there. They, that's why they're jumping one, out of the water. Yeah, there's like the worst shark sightings yeah, ever. Yeah. And they're chasing them yes, schools yes, of fish. Yes. But what, again, we, we talk about in every episode about, you know, Daddy was high strung at the racetrack. And it, but when there, the few moments that you had as a family at these tracks, that was one of them out swimming in the ocean that, six o'clock in the morning then imagine he went back in and put his uniform on and worked all day yeah well what do we do we, we went and got swimming, back by the yeah. pool and we was it was always like hey daddy won't you go swimming with us and all he'd be like yeah well, well then, we found out in 93 and 94 <laughs> we came back from the racetrack we was wanting to go to bed because you had to get up at five o'clock in the morning and be at the three and, and daddy was like why don't y'all want to go out and eat now <laughs> what you going to go swimming <laughs> yeah. or or big george getting in the pool well, i already had a bath yeah. oh yeah. what a great yeah. time george and donald yeah, yeah. yeah. donald was there with us yeah that's storm Bird, so many but, people. But anyway, the uh, growing up, at the, going at the, I guess we in the eighties there. We stayed at that Treasure Island, and that was a man. That was a deluxe yep. resort. It seemed like had a little putting green out there. Had a game room. Had the shuffleboard. I mean, yeah. we was it was great times for us when we was kids. And the hot dogs out here on the beach. Oh, oh yeah, what you talking about? Them little trucks, yep. like food yep. trucks they got now. Yep, nice mustard, cream. ketchup, really. Well, before sand. we get off Fourth of July, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, Heck, we'll have to look up what year, but Bobby Hillen was driving, leading the race. That's probably 86, right? And they still had wide open pit road. You know what I mean? Yeah, that had been 86. And right. all we had to do was come in. We were going to change the right side and go on out. And I guess Earnhardt didn't know when the race, but Bobby spun out on pit road. And there's some videos online where he, he about hits me, and my kids were watching it in the motel kind of the same way. And Or he was just a little bitty fella, and he goes, Daddy got runned over. <laughs> you know, told no and, kidding. And Connie didn't know it until later that it all happened. But, you know, Harry Hyde being a crew chief. and well, I guess 80, 80 We didn't win the race, but it's kind of a neat memory because what wasn't long after that they changed that pit road deal where they had to, you know. Yeah, the pit road speed. Didn't 87, because yeah. Bobby had that bad wreck. And, um, that was 88. 
88 the, Pocono. Was that, no, no, oh, no. Oh, yeah, when they come Tal up with the Vegas when he had the, when the right, plates but, come but out. Right, but, but they come back for, for Daytona. I thought they come, that was before the plate. They run the 390 carburetor, and then they went to the plate. So Ooh, I think that was you may last, be right. I think that was the last race was 87. I think it was a 390 and 87. Yeah, yeah, when y'all won. Yeah. But I'm thinking that was the last race that they run without their plate, wasn't it? Probably. Yeah. 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 Well, but again, we're, we're talking about the firecracker 400. Oh, we, we've mixed up and, a lot and of they told the beach beach and back and forth. Yeah. But Fourth of July, so many great memories. We can talk again, but don't, don't you miss these days that yes, that it's not the firecracker 400 ain't run on the Fourth of July anymore. Yeah, yeah Daytona. Yeah, yeah. It's like it just don't seem right. Well, does it? Yeah, to me, when I think of the Fourth of July, I think of the Firecracker Four Hundred. That's, that's where that's where you should be racing, and not not at the night race. I'm thinking during the middle of the day, in the heat of the day. Yeah, because you know, like I was talking about before, how hot it was down there. I can remember in night. I guess it was '93, and we'd run about uh, you know 100 100 miles or so into the race, and I had gloves on. I'm so hot, and I took my gloves off because I used to take my gloves off to kind of cool off, put my hand out the window, and I grabbed the steering wheel. And it burnt my hand. I had to put my glove back on because that's how, that's how hot it was in the car. <laughs> I mean, you can't believe how hot it was. In the car. I, I, I can not say it. Man, I can imagine. And the humidity. Well, man, you'd get out and you'd just be soaked because the, the, the sweat wouldn't go anywhere. But a good story about 93 Daytona. We would got in the race and all that. And it was, we were lined up down there at the hospital getting ready for the uh, pre-race parade or whatever. And all these guys were down there. And uh, gathering and having their little stories and all. And I went over and I sat in the shade, got away from just by myself because, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty nervous kid, 24 years old, getting ready to run Daytona Beach. The firecracker 400. Yeah. And uh, here come Davey Allison. He came over and said, Richie, you're about the smartest one out of this bunch. You're over here in the shade cooling off because, you know, it's fixing to get hot. <laughs> yeah. and I'll never forget that because he, he treated me. I heard I was a rookie and he treated me like I was a regular. And that was that always stuck with me. Davy Allison was a was a class act. Oh, all the Allisons, yeah. for yeah. for sure. Even though, they, yeah, it was hard competitors, but but good people. Yep. Well, you got any more Fourth of July I mean, stories? There's, there's a bunch, and my mind's reeling, so we'll have to we'll have to revisit the Fourth of July yeah. because now I want to go to the truck days, but that'll be a later date. Oh, we can talk about Milwaukee Mile and right. Summerfest and yeah. having to stop. <laughs> Because the parade was going down, <laughs> and we stood there watching the parade while we were at the racetrack. But yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that. Well, later. if you got any good Fourth of July firecracker four hundred stories, you know, comment, leave us some some good comments, and like and subscribe. Happy Independence Day, America! Back at Daytona, and you can see Air Force One carrying President Ronald Reagan and plans at the airship.